folks. This is Jason with Distinguished Billiards. Um, Greg already uh, showed you the video of him removing his rails. And uh, I am going to start to uh, destaple and remove this cloth and feather strips and this rubber to do a, a rubber repair job. Now, when you're only going to be able to see my hands and stuff going to work on this, so we go and pull pull all these staples up. Boink. I just go along and get one one edge up. Sometimes the whole staple comes out. Boink. And I finally found this cool staple removal tool. I just go and just get one side up, pop, 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 pop. And hopefully these videos can help you guys learn how to do some of this for yourself. Replacing the rubble, the rubber. <laughs> Replacing the rubber on these rails can be some sometimes it can be kind of a challenge. Especially when it comes to removing the glue after you have the rubber off. But we'll get to that later on in the video. But get all these staples up. Boom. 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 Yeah. I don't know why I've been using this. Normally I'll use a pocket knife. It's like that multi tool that every guy uses. Don't take too too long with this. I guarantee you, pulling staples is not the easiest, funnest job. A lot of wear and tear on the fingers and hands. But it's what needs to happen. You don't want to leave all the staples in and just rip and cut the cloth out because it just it leaves a lot of buildup, and you need that rail to sit down flat after you've recovered it. Now some some tables actually have a little divot down this back side along here and this area would be down like a sixteenth of an inch at some tables. So this is an American Heritage I believe as far as I can figure it did not have an emblem on it when Greg bought the table but I have a real good buddy Joe Landy he uh, services all the bar tables around here and does a lot of recoveries. He's taught me quite a, quite a bit about doing this stuff Plus what I learned on my own prior. Oh, oh, okay, now you can see me, huh? All right, get these sticks popped up. Pop, pop, pop. Got two more on the end here. Boink. Boink. All right. Now we switch tools to this guy. Now we start removing staples. You guys will have to pardon me. I'm doing this after my regular day job. <laughs> I do. I work on pool tables because I love to work on them. When I uh, was first learning how to play pool, I'm really passionate I have all this drive to keep playing and playing and playing. I wanted to know how to make tables play perfect. Or, well, as close to perfect as you can. So, I started uh, working on pool tables. I had a buddy that uh, was working at the Family Game Store in Monroe, Washington. And he uh, gives me a call and says, hey, I've got a, a, a set of details here on how this table goes together, but everything's all blurry, like it was photocopied double, side by side. You want to come help me uh, put together a pool table? I was like, well, yeah. So we did that. It was a Black Widow signature pool table, and it was all C-channel light gauge steel on the understructure, which blew me away. Because your 
Your better tables are made with a wood bed, all slate, seven eighths to an inch thick, with about five half inch to five eighths staple back on the back side. And with your Brunswick's bowl housings, I, I prefer the wood beds. They can always be tuned up. If stuff weathers and twists, you can always make it straight again. Now I'm going to work through this. Get the staples all out. A couple on this side. Make sure I don't drop any staples on where I'm working because I don't like to have to come back. Now, side pockets generally have a staple under the back side. I like, like, get in there, get in there. Down to here. Yeah, Greg, how many staples do you need back there, buddy? Now, I, I, I'm not saying that you should automatically go hire somebody to do your pool tables, but knowing how to do everything on a pool table will save you a lot of money on labor. I charge $500 to just change out and cut in new rubber. Oh, look at that. That thing just fell off. Greg. Greg put his table together last time. Now, I'm going to extend these rails. And you see, these guys, these guys should be glued on. But Greg wants to tighten his pockets up. So, we got to extend the rubber out. What I will do later after I get all this taken care of is I have to add a little bit of wood back here. Wood or really dense uh, rubber material. In the past I've used uh, like, well, mud flap, three eighths of an inch thick and done build out on this. But if you want to tighten your pockets up, you need something back here behind the rail. Like you can see right here where my fingers are at, you've got to build that up so you can extend the rail out. And uh, that's what we are doing with Greg's table. So, here, now that we got now we got all the tables pulled, just take your cloth and you start pulling just like this. Sometimes you can break your feather strip. You switch off. What? There we go. Now, yeah. what we got there? We'll dump that out. Knock this stuff off. Boom, 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 boom. Go through like that. Get in there. Oh, let's plug in the vacuum, shall we? <laughs> now you're back to that. So I take my feather strip, I put it back inside, and then I will take a little blue tape and tape it in place. so they don't fall out while I'm doing my work. But 
then you already saw the pocket facing fall off the other one so pull the staple boom boom I'm going to save Greg's pocket facings because they're actually pretty really clean now get to the rubber boom boom grab the rubber loose spot a lot of times you can just it comes off that easy. These set of rails over here, they did not come off that easy. So, when that's done, just toss that off to the side. I'll throw it away later. Now, I've dealt with glue, 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 glue so much on these guys. And it's never hard. It's not like you can just walk up and scrape it off. It just it just doesn't do that. And I tried to use acetone, and you end up you know really getting your fingers tired trying to get it off with acetone. It's just a real pain in the butt. But removing the glue, I think, is the most difficult part about any rail job there is. Because I am not a believer of just adding glue on glue on glue. So like after you've you're, you know you've got your cable 40 years and now you replace the rubber four times and well then you end up getting about a 16th inch of glue buildup on that. Well all that does is close down your playing space. A 16th of an inch adds up to an eighth of an inch all the way around. And then if it's even thicker, well who wants your playing surface turned down? So. I will use a combination of a sander and a few other things to go through these. Some glue sand better than others. A lot of your contact cements, the sander hits it, it starts getting them warm, and then it softens up a little bit. And then it's a real pain in the booty.
I will have to come that later and get my fingers really sore. Not my back here, that's not good. Oh, that's
So, you see how clean that is? Now I'm going to throw one rail up next to this. No, I don't have another one stripped, but it's all gooey. I should have shown that first. But, so, a little bit of glue on there isn't going to be too much of a deal. I'm going to make sure that you, you know, don't over sand. The rubber is going to run straight. It will glue on properly. I've never had a problem doing this. But I will need to take a little acetone to the side edges. This table has some thick glue on there. Alright folks. That's how you remove rail. Rubber and cloth. We'll start up again when I get to uh, gluing all the rubber on.